Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to add speech to text to your Flutter app. So first off you're just going to want to run the command flutter pub add speech to text and it's going to add the flutter package which controls speech to text. That'll add it to the pubspec.yaml file as a dependency. And you can see it there with the version 6.1.1. .1. For iOS we're going to need to configure in the info plist a key and value. I'm going to add this any speech recognition usage description which basically describes why our app needs access to speech recognition. The string's going to show inside your app when the prompt appears to allow speech recognition. I'm also going to add NS microphone usage description. This one's going to show when it prompts you to allow microphone usage. And you should explain why your app needs access to the microphone. Inside your Android manifest you're also going to need to add a couple of permissions. So let's record audio, internet, Bluetooth, Bluetooth admin and Bluetooth connect. The Bluetooth ones are just in case you're using a Bluetooth device that's connecting to your um, Android phone so that you can get the um, speech through that. I'm going to give my app a title. I'm going to create a home page. This is just a basic stateful widget so I'm just going to fast forward through this part. Now I'm going to go ahead and create my state for that stateful widget. So I'm specifying that I'm extending state and it's going to be the state for the home page. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to override the method init state and I'm going to call the superclasses version of that and then I'll go ahead and init my state soon. I also have this build function that I'm going to override that's basically going to display what I want to on screen. I'm going to use this scaffold wi widget which allows me to add an app bar with the title. going to make a text title, it's just going to be speech to text demo. Another thing that you can pass to the scaffold widget is a body and that's going to be basically what's displayed on screen. I'm going to center all my content and provide a child. The child is just a widget that's centered inside the body. I'm going to make that a column so I can add multiple widgets that will be arranged in a column, so vertically. And I'm going to center that inside the mobile app screen. I'm just going to display a text component for now so that I can see what it looks like at this stage. Up in my app I'm going to go and use my home page widget. So you can see that at this stage I haven't actually set up my device fully. If you're on an ARM Mac OS you're going to need to run some additional commands. I'm going to go ahead and run those now. I'll fast forward through this step because 
A lot of you may not need to do this. Now I can build my app and open it and you can see that test is on screen. I'll change that text just to show you fast reload. So you can see it reloads when I make that change. Now I'm going to import the package speech to text. So I can do some speech recognition. I'm creating a speech to text field and a boolean that stores whether speech, speech is enabled. I'm also going to hold the words which is going to be whatever is spoken and converted into a string when you enable the speech to te text to listen to you. So I'm creating a function that's going to init the speech to text and I'm going to make that asynchronous as there's going to be some asynchronous functions in here. So I'm going to await the speech to text dot initialize. You can see I've set speech enabled to false as the default value but it may be set to true when I await this initialize if speech to text is available. Then I'm setting state to trigger the UI update. I can init my speech from within this init state as I want to do that when I'm first initializing this widget, the widget state. I'm going to want to be able to do a couple of things with speech to text and those are starting listening and stopping listening. So I'm creating an asynchronous function here which is going to start listening. It's going to use this speech to text and it's going to just listen. On result it's going to go ahead and update the words with the, uh, with the result of the speech to text. So I'm going to create a function that's going to be called on speech result that will set that. Once again, just setting that state to make sure the UI is up to date. So this function on speech result that's going to be called when speech to text hears you speak words is going to return a, um, has a parameter of a speech recognition result and that's going to contain recognized words which I can use to set the state of the words field. I also mentioned I wanted a, the ability to stop listening, so I'm creating a function to help me do that. So once again, I'm going to await speech to text dot stop. and set state to just make sure that the state of the app is updated. So I'm going to want to show some text on screen. So if speech to text is listening, I'm going to want to show the words. Otherwise, if speech is enabled, I'm going to go ahead and show that you press a button to start listening or that speech is not enabled. So you can see that speech is not available and that's because I haven't um, rebuilt my app so because I've added in that speech I need to 
rebuild and reload so that it prompts me for access and so I've gone and done that and now it says press the microphone to sp start speech to text but I don't have a button yet so I better go and add a button that will enable me to do this. I'm going to use an icon button so the icon button is just basically going to show an icon on press is going to be a function that's called when I press the icon button So on pressed, I'm going to check whether speech to text is listening, and if it is, I'm going to stop listening. Otherwise, I'll start listening. I'll do a similar thing with the icon as well. So with the icon, if speech to text is listening, I'm going to want to show that an icon that will show the user to turn off speech to text and if speech to text is not listening then I want to show an icon to start listening. So you've got this icon widget here that you can use. So once again I'm checking whether speech to text is listening. And if it is I'm showing this microphone. Otherwise, I'll show mic off. Actually, I should be showing mic off when I'm when I am listening. So I'm going to just change these icons around to make more sense. You can also set certain things like icon size. So I'm just making that a bit bigger so it's easier to click on. You can set color as well. So it's red, green, blue, and the opacity. So zero for the opacity would be basically not visible, and one would be fully visible, like fully as it is now. So you can see I've made it like a turquoise color. And when I click it, it shows me that microphone and I can stop by clicking it and the words disappear because I'm not listening anymore. So you may have seen words showing up um, and you may they may not have lined with what I was saying. That's because when I was recording, I didn't actually have my microphone input and I wanted to be able to give you a voiceover instead. So don't worry that the words didn't align with what I was saying, they did at the time. So one of the main places where people use uh, speech to text is actually to collect input. So by default a lot of devices will include a microphone so that users can do t speech to text input and that's just an accessibility feature. But if you want more custom control, you can do that. So here I am creating a text field that's going to um, take in my custom spoken text. You might want speech to text if you are providing a way of commanding a game by voice, for example. Or you might have like a language game where you're testing that people can say a word. So you might use text to speech so that they can test that the word they spoken, have spoken aligns with what you have suggested they say. Just wrapping that in padding to make it look a little bit better. You can see that I can also type inside that text field. I'm going to add this text editing controller so that I can set it to be equal to the words spoken and collected by my speech to text class. So you can do that by providing the controller to the text field.
So now when there's a speech result, I'm going to want to update the controller's text so that's reflected inside that text editing box. And I'm just going to do that by setting the text to result.recognize words. And I'll go ahead and start speaking. You can see it's reflected inside my text editing box. When I click stop, it stays there. If I were to start speaking again, I can override it. You could keep a store of what the previous words were and append them if you wanted to, but I'm just keeping this pretty simple. So you can add a suffix to a text editing box and I'm going to add my icon button so that when I'm using my text box it's a bit more natural that when I click on the microphone it actually starts adding that text and this voice input into the text editing controller. So you can see I've got my microphone there. That icon size is a bit big, so I'm just going to remove that now. Similarly, the color doesn't really fit, so I'm just going to remove that too. So when I click on my icon, I can go ahead and speak, and I'll do the same functionality as before. That just looks a little bit better. I can still add text on to the end of that if I want to. So now I'm going ahead and showing you this inside Android. Um, you're going to need to make sure that you've added this configuration to the build gradle. So you need to set that min SDK version to 21. Now I'm going to go ahead and run. I've actually realized I put these uh, permissions inside the wrong part of my Android manifest, so I'm just going to update that and fix that up. And go ahead and run again. So you can see it requests my permission to do these things, such as allowing um, the audio recording, and I can specify whether I want it to be just when I'm using the app this time or always. So when I click on that little microphone button I can start recording audio but it's not actually working. So I just want to check a few reasons why. And so I'll take you through my process with me. So I'm just going to remove that icon button, just making sure that it's not an issue itself with having a button inside the text field. It shouldn't be because you'd think that'd be a reasonably common use case, but my concern would be that it might be clashing with the inbuilt functionality. So I'm just adding the icon button separately below as it was previously in the iOS app. Now I'm doing text-to-speech again, it's still not picking up my audio. After some investigation, I actually found that you need to ensure that virtual microphone users host audio input is selected, and then you can test inside the Android emulator. That's just available in that settings microphone tab. I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial today. If you have, please like and subscribe for more content. All my code will be available on GitHub.